At the end of October last year, 2022, early November, executive producer Wifey and I took a Carnival Cruise Line. This is our first Carnival Cruise trip, our first cruise trip in general, and we're going to take a look at it. But first, let's roll that intro. Tommy loves stuff where he talks about the things that he loves. So a couple days after my wife's actual birthday, we boarded the Carnival Cruise Line Radiance. It took place in Long Beach, California. That's where you got on. And it was a five-day cruise. We had a couple days at sea, went to a few places in California, Mexico. Really fun trip. But first, getting on, you have to go up this like long ramp and stuff like that. But once you got on, the cruise ship looked incredible. It was way bigger than you would expect it to be, you know what I mean? Right away, we got on, we got some lunch going, we got some drinks going, you know, we wanted to kick off the party vibe. Now, what you're seeing here is probably one of the coolest things from day one or, or any day that we were on the cruise here. Now, this is the view from our room at sunset. Now, you're seeing video here, some pictures, whatever, whatever. It was an incredible, breathtaking view. It was like a Bob Ross painting, you know what I'm saying? But it was cool just to sit there with her have a good time and like watch the sunset you know what i mean that might sound corny but hey i don't care it was awesome now for dining options they had a lot of options because i got my snack on you know what i'm saying your boy had to represent for the chubcon nation you know but dinner the first night we went to a little fancier area and like, thankfully you didn't have to dress up or nothing like that but the portions were kind of small to me like they were like bite size you know what i mean like a couple bites if that and which was cool, but you know, I'm a big guy, I like to eat. So for the first night, I got the calamari and they only gave you like six pieces. Come on now, six pieces? Still, it was pretty good, it was breaded nice. I had some salmon and we had chocolate lava cake for dessert. You know, everything was really great. Like the iced tea that they served there, which you think wouldn't be different from one place to another, was really good. But it was on that first night where I started to notice some things that were a little weird, like kind of nickel and diming you, you know what I mean? Like, when we first signed up, I thought it said room service was complimentary, which would be awesome, but it was not. <laughs> you know, you can order room service 24 hours a day for only certain items, you know, like fries, you know, I don't think they might have had a burger or something like that, but like... The drinks were extra and stuff. Even if you paid for it, like we did, we bought a soft drink package, which gets you like unlimited soda. But if you ordered in room service, that didn't apply. So you had to buy like your own individual drinks, which seemed kind of shady. One but of the biggest problems I had was when we signed up for the room, you know, we got our nice room and stuff. My wife took care of everything. And they said, we're going to have a fridge in the room. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but... I actually am a diabetic, and I know you can't tell from the food I'm eating and stuff like that, that whatever, it was vacation. Anyway, that's besides the point. And so for being needing insulin, you need a refrigerator, you know what I'm saying? And they didn't have one, so I basically for the week had to put buckets of ice and put my insulin in there, and it was, it was a makeshift thing. They said they had a fridge, and Carnival Cruise on your radiance, y'all was lying. For a lot of people oh, who watch this that know me, this is probably the first time they found out I was diabetic. <laughs> I don't like to talk about it much. The first official day was a day at sea as we traveled to eventually to Baja, California. So we slept in and when we got up, we decided to try the Guy Fieri barbecue place. Now, now different celebrities had different things going on at the, on the ship. Like Guy Fieri had a few spots like... There was like maybe a burger place and he had a barbecue place, which I'm going to show in a minute. But Shaq was also had chicken sandwiches. Like it was a weird like, you know, it was a weird like, oh, this stand is sponsored by a celebrity, but uh, whatever. So Guy Fieri's barbecue, as you can see here, we got a bunch of different stuff. Um, you know, you, you can you didn't have to pay extra. It was included in your package. So you could just say, I want this, this and this. And we got some ribs, we got some collard greens, some mac and cheese. It was all good. good. Guy seems like an awesome dude. Love watching diners, drive-ins, and dives. <laughs> the next day we pulled into Baja, California. And it was cool. Like, like right when you get there, you could see like what looked like a pirate ship in the water, which I learned later was like taking tourists out on the water and stuff like that. 
when you got there, it was cool, but it was crowded and hot. And there was a lot of drunk, super drunk tourists, like who couldn't handle their booze or whatever. But like, so people were sloppy and you kind of had to avoid them bumping into you or starting stuff with you, at least me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a big guy, so, you know, people get drunk, they want to fight. But anyway, don't try it. <laughs> but we found a spot to eat at, and the wait was super long. But, I mean, shout out to the staff, because there was, like, one lady working the entire restaurant, which I felt bad for her. Like, when we got there, there was, like, two people, but I I'm assuming the other person had to go cook and stuff, because that one waitress probably had about 15 or 20 tables, you know what I'm saying? So we had to wait a really, really long time, like, way over an hour for our food, but, like, the food was good, and I was super hungry. You know, I got nachos and a beer and stuff like that. Once we got the food, it was good. It was hell of expensive. They didn't really have the prices on there too much and stuff. But, like, I thought, like, how much could, uh, you know, some nachos be? But it was super expensive, but it was good. I enjoyed it. Walking around Baja was cool. Like I said, it was super hot, so we didn't spend too long there. But it was cool seeing the stands of people selling their stuff. My wife and I split a churro on the way there, walking around. It was super good. Not too expensive, but, you know, I really enjoyed it. And this was, in essence, what the trip was for me. It was about, you know, just grabbing some books, throwing them in my backpack, finding a nice spot and chilling, relaxing with my wife, having a good time, getting a couple drinks going, you know, get some snacks going, just having a good time, spending time with just me and her, you know, for our, her birthday, my birthday's coming up a couple weeks after hers, you know, so we were celebrating together, and, you know, it was, it was, a, I'm, I'm gonna mention this a lot, but it was a fantastic trip. Now, dinner came around, and we were back on the ship at this point. It was super cool, you know, you took a little taxi, water taxi, or a ferry, to the Baja, to land, to land, and then you took it back, you know, that was cool to get on a little tiny boat, you know, you walk all through the regular cruise ship to get down there, and like I said, super cool, but dinner rolled around, and one of the cool things about, you know, being on the cruise ship was I was trying food that I normally wouldn't try. Now, for an appetizer, I had a shrimp cocktail, which I have had before, and the shrimp was really good. It was really clean, and the cocktail sauce was good, but I did have alligator. <laughs> yeah, I've never in my life had alligator before. It was like an alligator fritter. But it was more like a hush puppy kind of thing. So there was like little bits of alligator in there. And it was like a little corn and stuff like that. Really good. And one of the things I learned, because somebody else at another table I heard ordered more than one thing, was that you could order two appetizers. You could order two entrees, hell, if you wanted. And once I learned that, y'all, <laughs> your boy went a little bit nuts. So I ended up getting ribs and steak. Yes! Living the dream, that's right. Alligators, ribs, steaks, all kinds of different stuff. <laughs> and so everything was really good. You know, I finished everything. Like I said, they were kind of small portions, at least to me. But at the end of the meal, I ended up being full. So like when it came to my plate and I saw like maybe two, three ribs, I was like, oh, you know, this ain't going to fill me up. But by the end of the meal, I was totally full and well satisfied. Next, we ended up in Ensenada, Mexico. And when we got there, they said you could pay a little bit extra and go to a tourist spot called La Bufadora. And uh, it was like the blowhole. So we went there and it was like a natural spring where like shot the water up from like a little cave and stuff. And that was super cool. You know, shout to our tour guide. His name was Caesar. Um, I doubt you're going to watch this Caesar, but if you are, you were a great tour guide, really entertaining, really funny. And because it was a 45 minute drive, you know, to and from La Bufadora, from the place that they dropped us off on at the carnival cruise line and you know props to them because they took us right back to the cruise line as opposed to like getting on a little bus and then going to the cruise line you know they skipped that extra step when we went back so we had more time to chill there and it was a definite tourist spot you know you had people in their stands and stuff and they're yelling at you to come check out their stuff like their stuff is the best and you know you could get whatever you want there and we ended up just buying some candy that we took back to the room but we did get some food because uh, it was lunchtime like like i said when we went to baja mexico it was super expensive but this is what i was talking about you know we got a bunch of tacos got a good ass cold beer and uh soda for my wife and you know it was good time you know we got it and then we got back on the bus and headed back out but it was fun the food was really good great stuff we are pirate ship. 
We had an extra day at sea as well, but I didn't really film that day because I was just having drinks and reading and having a good time with my wife, you know, just me and her. I didn't want to have to do anything for the channel or film anything, you know what I'm saying? But it was a great day. Fantastic time. Our last day at dinner, I had a peach soup, which peach soup sound interesting to me. I love soups. I love peaches. So what could go wrong, right? Especially if it was a savory one. My mind was like, what could it be like? And what it ended up being was like a peach sorbet that they kind of poured cream all over. And being lactose intolerant, I couldn't eat it. <laughs> you know, um, I didn't want to ruin my night. If you know, you know. And I ended up trying the other appetizer that they had, which was frog's legs. Now, as you can see here, the frog's legs, they look like kind of chicken wings. And, you know, they tasted kind of bland, to be honest with you. Like, they needed something. They needed hot sauce. They needed something. Bland and like I'm in the stereotypes. Oh, it tastes like chicken. Everything does, but this kind of did. You know what I mean? It is the texture of chicken. It didn't taste like it per se, but it definitely had like a bland quality. It, it needed something. I ordered some fried chicken, which sounded delicious at the time. When I got it, it was just okay. I mean, it ain't no Popeyes. You know what I'm saying? For dessert, I had something I'd never tried before, which was baked Alaska. And again, this was I didn't know. I had no idea what it would be like. I. I Imagine Baked Alaska was something on fire, and it did not come on fire. It was mostly ice cream, so I kind of ate around that, and yeah, so it wasn't great. One of the things they did on the last day of the dinner was, for some reason, the staff broke out in this, like, what I thought was kind of a demeaning, like, song and dance that they had to do. Like, they had to all stop what they were doing when the music hit, and they sang a song thanking us for being there, and they had to do the Macarena. Like, I'm sure this policy started when the Macarena was hot, like in the 90s. But I and a bunch of other people, the POCs, mostly stood there and kind of looked at them like, oh, I'm sorry, you kind of have to do this. And the other people thought it was hilarious. Like, this lady, as you can see in this picture here, who was sitting at the table next to us, got up and started, like, mockingly dancing with them and like she was like laughing and pointing at him it was like i almost told her something so i mean here's her picture i'm blocking out her face but she's still a clown and yeah i thought it was horrible i wish they wouldn't have to do that i mean i'm sure they don't love it so you know that was one of the low points of the cruise watching oh they also had to do the chicken dance though one on it no 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 nah son then it came time to get off the cruise and that was hectic as hell man like you know you have all these people trying to get off <laughs> out of one exit and they like block stairwells and like the elevators didn't work and you know people were running and shoving and it was just awful like you know i don't know how better they could do it but it was basically like get off now and because we need to clean the ship and then we're gonna head back out but and i get that part but like dang man just people were in such a hurry to get off then you go off, you got to go through customs and stuff. Like, you're not getting off and just going to your car. Like, you got to go a whole bunch of lines and stuff. Like, I don't know how you can streamline it more, but that wasn't working, y'all. Now, on the way home, the drive to the Bay Area, you know executive producer Wifey and I had to hit up one of our favorite spots in Southern California, and that is Porto's Bakery. Now, I have talked about this in previous videos, and I will talk about it in future videos. Porto's is the bomb. So... You know, I just snapped a couple pictures here because we were mostly picking what we wanted. And we got a good selection for breakfast slash lunch on the drive home. And it was a good drive home. You got the music going. You know, I got my favorite person in the universe with me. You got Portos. What could be better? You know? And that was our trip on the Carnival Cruise Line, the Radiance. You know, it was an incredible week. It was a fantastic trip. And I'm going to say one of the best vacations we've ever taken. This was our first cruise together, and this is only the second time I've ever been on a cruise. The first time I went, you know, a number of years ago with my family, and that sucked because I was with my family, but because there's nobody to hang out with. But anyway, I was with my most favorite person in the universe. You know, we had music going, we had books to read, we had drinks and snacks, you know, all the things I love with the person I love the most. And, you know, happy birthday again, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to see this is months afterwards. Like... This happened, we went in the end of October, early November for our birthdays and stuff. And at the time I'm filming this, it's February 2023. We went in 2022. And it's taken me a long time to put this footage together because there was one more thing that the cruise gave me. 
you know what? I'm going to go ahead and play the video. So, funny little add-on to this video is that a couple days after we got back from the cruise, I tested positive for coronavirus. So, this was my first time having the Ronas. And as you can tell, I sound horrible. I feel horrible. <laughs> um, taking medicine for it, thankfully. Um, yeah, so me and my wife are just trying to rest up, recover. And uh, hopefully we'll be done with this soon. Still had a fun time on the cruise, but uh, did not expect that to happen. That's right. After two and plus years, your boy, the unicorn who never got COVID before, finally got COVID. My wife and I both got it. And I'm pretty sure it was from the cruise. Um, you know, mask was non-existent. People were wearing them. Maybe one or two people. And, you know, we even unfortunately fell into the habit of not wearing it and stuff you know you just forget or whatever I don't know there's no excuse but anyway it took a long time to get over it and I felt horrible for a long time but eventually did get over it and then got it again right after <laughs> during Thanksgiving so you know antibodies were like nah we taking a break we still on vacation but so uh it took a while to get over the COVID and then the holidays happened so this video is really late but better late than never. So the Carnival Cruise Line was great. You know, you do run the risk of COVID, but you do that anywhere these days. I would definitely, definitely go again. And I can't wait to go on the next cruise with my wife. And if you like what you see or are mildly entertained, please like and subscribe down here. Hit that bell notification, let you know when I'm updating. We got a lot of great stuff on this channel. If you like comics, movies, wrestling, anything pop culture, we're pretty much talking about it. So there's definitely stuff for you to check out. Check the old videos on the playlist to see what we got going. And we'll be back with another video soon. Till then, later.